I've got my garage gear on. I've got the problem in front of me. And uh, which is somewhere between there <laughs> and there. And uh, we're going to trace what the issue is. God, this bike needs a good clean up. I'll do that before I sell it. Okay, so if we have a quick look underneath this pedal, let's just start to see what we can see. So I'm really hoping you can see this. Um, that's just the base of the pedal. You can see the spring just up there. We're turning the brake pedal and the little adjuster screw there. So there's no actual wiring, so obviously that sits on a spline and the shaft goes through to the other side. So I'm suspecting that there's uh, a switch somewhere further around the system. So there's no switch mechanism here at all. Um, it's just all mechanical this side. There's no wires or switches at this end. So if we come this side, uh, that's where the shaft comes out through the other end right there. That's the uh, sort of lever mechanism and rod mechanism that pulls on your brake drum to operate it. And of course you can see attached to that, you've got that small spring there going up to this switch here. And that's what we need to test. Make it a bit easier. Well, you don't want it to be easy, really, do you? Because if it was easy, it'd just pop off anyway. <laughs> and hold that end. There you go. All right, that's it. See that? So. It's a switch we've properly got to test now. Okay, so I can check the continuity in this switch and I can check that I've got a circuit there. So with the ignition on, I should be getting 12 volts across that switch, across those wires. And then of course I just need to check the switch is working properly, which we can just go do now with the multimeter. So, using our general understanding of uh, the wiring for the rear brake light, um, what we can start to do is just visualize uh, the circuit so that we can start to look at a few things and decide what we need to check. So, if you think about the brake light circuit, it's going to start with the battery um, so you can have a sort of a positive and a, a, a negative side and the negative side is just very simply just going to run uh, to uh, ground okay and then one of the many things that it's going to do is provide voltage through the ignition key to various things and in this instance it's going to be the brake light so through the brake pedal what we do is we have another switch so if we just draw the brake pedal there very good drawing and on this particular bike you can see it's just operated with a very simple sort of spindle arrangement so as soon as you put downforce on that pedal there, then you've got like a, an actuating rod uh, on the other end of this uh, pedal arrangement on the other side of the bike, uh, turning turning that way. And then what that does in turn is it's got a, a little spring hooked around it. Uh, 
which pulls on a switch there. So when you press down on the brake uh, pedal, actuates this rod, pulls the switch and completes the circuit here. So the current travels down um, from the positive side, goes through the ignition key um, unit, runs all the way down to your brake switch, depressing the brake pedal, not only operates the brakes but also um, closes the switch and completes the circuit which goes off to your uh, brake light, illuminating your light and then the negative will run back to ground. So you can see it's a very very simple um, arrangement and what I've done essentially is I've cut this wire and this wire here which I showed you uh, a few moments ago just left on, on the bike leaving the positive and negative uh, still on the switch there okay so the green and yellow is the uh, negative it, it doesn't really matter which way you test it it's um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> what we should be getting as you can see when you look at a very simple drawing and I'm sorry I know this is very dumbed down it is a very simple drawing and there are going to be fuses and things in here and there are going to be possibly little spurs coming off of what is to go and um, feed other things um, uh, particularly as I've just fitted an Ignitec unit and that came off the brake feed apparently and I haven't done anything to it it was this light wasn't illuminating before I even messed around with that um, but essentially if we look at this switch in isolation here and we check that when we uh, close the switch by pulling this little pin out that we've got continuity through these wires then we know that this switch is is working and it can be used again and reconnected um, when we check that coming down uh, this positive line here um, that we've got voltage and we can check that by just using our multimeter and testing it against ground then we know that we're we're pretty much good all the way up to the switch and if we know the switch is working then we know that the entire problem is somewhere between um, the negative side of the switch there so just here on this very dumb down diagram um, and the uh, earth so if if we've got a, a feed there okay and the switch is fine then what we should expect to find is a breaking continuity here which means the electricity just is not reaching the light okay now the light works fine on the front brake switch but then they're quite possibly just two completely different circuits so if there's continuity here then that, that would be strange if you've got voltage there the switch is working and there's continuity there but what that could mean is that somewhere along the line here uh, that uh, this section somewhere along this section this could just be uh, if you can imagine the frame of the bike there it could just be connecting and grounding uh, grounding out you just it's it's difficult to tell and that will be in a loom with a whole bunch of other wires um, and it could just be grounding out against something else but you'd expect perhaps to see uh, multiple issues there if that was the case because it would be affecting something else as well so that's possible that there's a break in this wire stopping the uh, just you know stopping the circuit from being complete or it's grounding out against the frame which means it's then just bypassing so essentially it's just uh, you know finding another earth point before it gets to the light so those are the two things if there is continuity there um, there's, it's possible that this switch just isn't working or we've lost the live feed there somewhere that's what we will then just need to trace next because uh, we will need to find whether it's uh, an issue with um, this stretch that runs up to the ignition or whether there's a problem between uh, you know the ignition and the battery shouldn't be really because that should just have one feed to the key and if there wasn't power coming from there nothing else would work so anyway that's our starting point really testing this switch which we're going to do now
So there you go, just used my trusty old wire strippers, <laughs> they are old, just to take the ends off those sheaths there. Um, I'm kind of hoping it's the switch because that just means I've found the problem quickly and you know I can replace the switch. If it's not then it's just a bit more tracing along the loom to do. So, moment of truth, I'm just going to connect up um, one wire and I shall connect I shall connect that to the negative. You just have to forgive all these trails of wires. What we should see now uh, is that when I pull that out, that should complete the circuit, and then you should see uh, no resistance. In other words, continuity. Nothing. Interesting, isn't it? So that's actually telling me that when I pull this switch it's not completing the circuit. Now just to be sure, well I'm not sure, but just to be just to sort of check, if I connect these two ends there you go, we've now got continuity so, um, what we're going to do, we're just going to do the other test on it, and that should give exactly the same result. We're going to use the battery. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just connect the positive to the battery. And I think I'll continue to use my little alligator clip there, connect it to one side of the switch. And I'll then connect the negative side to the green, and connect that back up to the battery. So what you should see now is that light come on, so you're not looking for any numbers on a readout. Nothing, pulling quite hard, <clears throat> nothing at all. So there's no, no light coming on when I operate that switch. If I just connect those across, there you go. That is one dodgy rear brake switch. What I've done, I've put the multimeter onto DC volts uh, and I've set it onto the 20 volts mark. Um, and you just need to make sure that you put it on a setting higher than the, the rating of your, your battery, obviously this is 12 volts. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and connect the negative side of that to the negative side on the multimeter the ignition's off at the moment by the way so no problems there and I'm just going to connect the positive side which I should be getting current through here with the ignition on and I'm just going to connect that to let me just pop that through there to the positive side of the multimeter Okay, so I'm just going to lay them down out of the way. Now when I turn the ignition on, you should see some volts. There you go. So that's telling me that I've got voltage coming through the live feed um, and I've got continuity actually going back through the negative side that goes through the brake light itself and back to ground that way. I could equally just um, touch this green against the ground of the bike, but that wouldn't actually test the rest of the circuit then, would it? It wouldn't tell me that the, the negative side of the uh, wire to the brake light and back to ground is working. At least doing it this way, that tells me it's all working through the brake light. So, um, if I was to contact these across, we should find a brake light come on. So what I'm gonna do, actually, I'm just gonna disconnect those wires from the multimeter. So you can see the wires now disconnected and the multimeter is zeroed. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go and point this camera at the brake light and see if it comes on by connecting these two across, which it should do. There you go. Okay guys, new switch has arrived in the post. It's an aftermarket part, not Honda original. 
and it's brand new. And I did source uh, um, one that was taken off a Honda CX500 uh, that was second hand, but this was this was just over seven pounds um, versus about seventeen pounds that somebody wanted for an old Honda part. Which um, yeah, whilst it might be a Honda original, it's old. So yeah. Anyway, come, it's quite a lot of flex on there uh, with these bullet connectors. Um, if I was to use all of that, I'd need to basically strip back the insulating wire on the loom and find where the bullet connectors are. So it might be a different length anyway, there might be different size connectors and um, they might not even be present. So uh, all I'm going to do is just snip it back to where I cut off the original switch and strip the wires back and solder it in. So that should do the job. Let's crack on with that. Right, so I've cut the wires down on the switch. I have left myself um, considerably more length so I've got something to play with. And if we just strip those back. That much. <laughs> There you go, one, two, and twist them up. And there you go. So I'm just going to slip a couple of pieces of heat shrink over the ends. Slip that back there. And one on there. You just want to get a piece of heat shrink that's just slightly bigger. I'll do the job just nicely. Let's get that out of the way. So if I slip it right up there, it's nice and out of the way for the moment. It's a bit fiddly. There you go. So very clean uh, soldering iron, just give it a bit of a tin. Already cleaned the tip off. Wipe the excess off. Wet sponge. So we're going to do a hot solder. I would say that's a terrible solder. Um, actually, if it's if it is held okay, <laughs> my heat shrink has already shrunk. <laughs> so that's not going to move. <laughs> what a wally, eh? The only way I could get around this is if I just snipped them off and started again, get a new bit of heat shrink on there. What I should have done is put a much bigger piece of heat shrink on. Never mind. Um, what I'll do is I will just use a bit of insulating tape, good old fashioned insulating tape. So um, not a problem, but the heat has travelled up the wire and it's already shrunk the... <laughs> Never mind. Right, so uh, that's that one done. Um, let me just get that one insulated now. I do feel a bit of a wally. Just 
just need to bend that over, look. A bit more. That should do the job, shouldn't it? There you go. Moment of truth, let's see if the switch works, shall we? So, ignition on. I'll use the uh, front brake lever on the handlebars first, so you can see that's working as it should. And then if we just depress the rear brake on the foot pedal, also working. I have to say though, that is quite a bit of travel on that pedal, so that just needs adjusting up. But essentially, that solved the problem. Let's get it all back together.